Okay, welcome to ECE 302. This is lecture 1.1 on infinite series. I am Professor Stanley Chen. So here's the outline for today's lecture. As you can see, we have five sections for this chapter. In the first section, we are going to talk about two items. The first item is called the geometric series. And the second item is called the binomial series. So in this lecture, we are going to review these materials. I'm pretty sure many of you have already learned these in your freshman or sophomore calculus. So these are pretty much a review of what you have learned. Let us stop by talking about geometric series. This geometric series would be extremely useful when we define random variables and when we try to calculate their expectations or means. So what do I mean by a finite geometric series of power n? Uh, so you can see that in this uh, definition, a finite geometric series really contains a sequence of numbers in the form of one uh, r uh, one r r square r cube and so on until r to the power n. This is what we call a finite geometric series. And uh, if you try to sum all these numbers, then you can see that we are calculating this number. Okay, so it would be 1 plus r squared plus, uh, plus r plus r squared and so on, all the way to r to the power n. And this I can uh, write it using a very compact notation. It's the summation notation. It says that I am going to sum uh, from this index of k going from 0 all the way to n for this quantity r to the power k. Okay, so now we want to calculate this finite sum and we ask what is the value that comes out from this finite sum. And uh, we can do this calculation and th this theorem shows that this finite sum equals to this ratio. Okay, so without worrying about what I have on the right hand side, let us try to do this calculation by ourselves. Okay, so let's just look at this quantity by ourselves. And we can ask, okay, what, what would be the sum? And you can see that on the left hand side, this is 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the power n. How about I multiply this thing by 1 minus r? then this would give me um, what? Well, you can first multiply this entire series with 1. So you have 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the power n. And then you have minus r times this entire sum. So you also have 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the power n. And then we can do the expansion, and you can see that this is uh, 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the power n. So that's the first part. How about the second part? Well, let's just expand the terms. Then you have r uh, plus r squared plus r cubed plus dot 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 plus r to the power n plus 1. Okay, so what do I have? Well, you can see that I can do the cancellation between the terms. Here you have r, and then here you have r squared, and then you have r cubed, and so on, until the last one, r to the power n, you will get cancelled. Okay, so what remains is, uh, would be the first term, it would be this term, and also the last term, and so you will have 1 minus r to the power n plus 1, Okay, and so now you can see that uh, if this product, this entire product, uh, is written as 1 minus r to the power n minus 1, then certainly 
1 plus r plus r square plus da 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 plus r to the power n uh, will equal to the ratio of 1 minus r to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus r. Okay, so now if you go all the way back to the beginning, uh, you will see that this is indeed what the theorem tells you. Okay, so for a finite geometric series, if you take the sum, that will give you this ratio of 1 minus r to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus r. All right, so far so good. Um, now, let us try to extend this idea to infinite geometric series. Uh, so in this case, instead of trying to calculate the sum of the terms up to the power n, I am going to sum all the way to infinity. Okay, so uh, the right-hand side of this corollary shows that it becomes this ratio, and we ask, how can this be possible? And uh, to show this, what you can do is that you can start with the previous calculation, which is a finite sum when k going from 0 to n, and then you have r to the power k. Uh, this is really just 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the power n. Okay, and thus we know that uh, it is going to be uh, 1 minus r to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus r. Okay, so now let us try to send this n to infinity. Okay, so let's replace the n by this infinity. And so what you can do here is that you can just send the limit of n going to infinity, right? And here uh, on the uh, uh, right-hand side, you can also put the limit of n going to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, then you can see that this is a ratio. And uh, if we call the a very small comment here, that r is between 0 and 1, then you can see that when limit n goes to infinity, the numerator will go to what? If this number will go to 0, right? And so this term, uh, the numerator will go to 1, and then the denominator will remain 1 minus r. So the whole thing works when this r is between 0 and 1. If that's the case, then you have a very simple formula, which says that if you want to sum uh, 1 r r squared all the way to infinity, then you will have this ratio of 1 divided by 1 minus r. Can r be bigger than 1? Um, the, the answer is no. Uh, so we ask what will happen if r is bigger than 1? Then uh, you can recall that this entire thing works by looking at the limit of n going to infinity of 1, uh, 1 minus uh, r to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus r. So if r is bigger than 1, then this term, uh, if bigger than 1, uh, then r to the power n plus 1 will go to infinity. And so you will explode, and then this term will be undefined. Uh, and therefore, you really need to have r is lying between 0 and 1. Can r equals to 0? Uh, if r equals to 0, then what will happen? Well, you can recall the finite sum series. Okay, So in the finite series, you have 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the power n. And then on the right-hand side, you have 1 minus r to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus r. So if r equals to 0, then what will happen? is that on the, uh, the left-hand side, all these numbers, they're just zero, okay? And then uh, on, on the uh, right-hand side, this will go to zero, and this will go to zero as well, and so you will have one, okay? And here you will also have one. So when r equals to zero, you can still calculate the thing. But when r, as long as r is bigger than one, then this thing becomes undefined. How about when r equals to 1? When r equals to 1, you will also notice that on the uh, uh, when, when r equals to 1, then on the left-hand side, you have just uh, adding a bunch of, of 1s. And this, of course, will go to infinity as n goes to infinity. Okay, so r equals to 1 also doesn't work. So let us look at two examples. 
the, this example says that we want to calculate this infinite series, which is uh, summing uh, from k equals to 2 to infinity. And then the term that we're summing is 1 over uh, 2 to the power k. And so uh, if you're not familiar with this summation notation, you can just write out uh, the exact expression of this sum. So here you have uh, what? Well, you start with 2. So you have starting uh, with uh, 4, uh, because 2 to the power 2 is 4. Uh, and then when k equals to 3, you have 1a, and so on. And then you have uh, all the way summing to infinity. So you, you, you're really trying to evaluate this infinite sum. And what can we do? Well, the theorem that we have shown is that it has to start uh, with, with, with uh, k equals to 0. So what we can do is that we can squeeze out 1 over 4, and then we have 1 over 2 here, and so on. Right? And so once you squeeze the 1 over 4, then the stuff that's inside this bracket is just an infinite sum of uh, all the terms of 1 over 2. So then you can apply the formula, which is uh, 1 divided by 1 minus r. Uh, so that will give you uh, 1 half in this term. And then you calculate everything together. Then you have uh, 1 half over here. Then uh, you will get uh, 1 half. Okay, And therefore, this uh, infinite series uh, will end up of a result of one half. Okay, now let's do something a little bit more complicated. Uh, uh, suppose we are now interested in calculating uh, this uh, geometric series. In this case, you will have uh, one and then two r and three r square. And uh, if you want to have a compact expression, it will be summation of k times r to the power k minus one. So we ask, what, what, what would this be? Now, this corollary shows you that on the right-hand side, this expression is given by 1 divided by 1 minus r squared. So we ask, why? Well, to calculate this result, what you want to show is that uh, we can start with the previous, um, <coughs> we can start with the previous uh, expression, which is uh, that uh, 1 plus r uh, plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the power n plus uh, n, uh, that will be equal uh, to, uh, okay, so let's try to sum to infinity, okay, so to uh, make our life a little bit easier. So we can sum all the way uh, to infinity, and then uh, what you can do is that uh, you can take the derivative of the first uh, term, and see what will happen on the uh, right hand side, okay, uh, d over dr. Okay, so now if you take the derivative on the left hand side, that will give you 0 plus 1 plus 2r squared plus 3r, uh, 2r uh, plus 3r squared plus 4r cubed, and so on. Okay, and on the right hand side, you will just need to take the derivative. Uh, for this term here, uh, once, and then you will get 1 over 1 minus r uh, square. Okay, and therefore it shows you that if, uh, uh, if I start with the infinite geometric series, which is this formula, and then if I take the derivative uh, once, then I will be able to, to end on uh, this expression, which is uh, the result of this corollary. So you ask, when do I need to use this derivative-based infinite series? Uh, you will need to use them when we try to calculate the average of a random variable. That will happen when we go to chapter 3 of our course. So let us work on this example. Uh, can we calculate this infinite sum uh, here, uh, where you have k times uh, 1 over 3 to the power k? So let us write out this expression, so this summation k going from 1 to infinity of k times 1 over 3 to the power k, uh, this is uh, 1 times 1 over 3 plus 2 times 1 over 9 plus dot dot dot, so that will really be 1 over 3 plus 2 over 9 uh, plus uh, 3 over uh, 27 and so on. Okay. And so we want to apply the theorem before. Uh, so what we can do is that let us squeeze out uh, the 1 over 3. Then you can have uh, 1 plus 
uh, 2 times 1 over 3 plus 3 times 1 over 3 square plus dot 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 okay and so this uh, is just the derivative result and then the quantity that you want to put in as the r is 1 over 3 so you have 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3 uh, this entire thing uh, square and then you have 1 over 3 coming outside and that would be your uh, quantity and so you can do some sim simplification that will give you uh, 1 over uh, 2 3 uh, square and so uh, we can do a little bit more calculation here so that will give you 1 over 3 times uh, 9 over 4 so that will become uh, 3 over 4 okay so this example this infinite sum uh, would equal to 3 over 4 all right so I hope by now you should be able to see how to calculate an infinite series so the second half of this lecture is to talk about another very useful series it's called the binomial series and again this is something that you should have seen in, a, in an algebra course uh, if not it's time to learn it if yes then just bear with us uh, it will be a very good review of the material so to start with let me just define this term called the um, combination or the n choose k notation this n choose k notation is defined as n factorial divided by k factorial and n minus k factorial so so this n factorial is really n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times dot 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 times 3 times 2 times 1 okay so for example what is 3 factorial 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1 so that will give you a 6. What is 5 factorial? 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that will give you uh, what? So uh, this is 6, this is 20, so that will give you 120. Okay, so this is the meaning of a factorial. And then uh, in this uh, n choose k notation, uh, we can do some very simple examples. For example, 5 choose 3, this is what? Well, you put the 5 factorial here and then you have 3 factorial and then uh, 5 minus k so k is 3 so you have 2 factorial so now you can say 5 4 3 2 1 and then here you have 3 2 1 and then uh, here is 2 and 1 and so clearly you can see that uh, the numerator and denominator you can do some cancellation and then what we what, well, will remain is 5 times 4 divided by 2 times 1 so the numerator will give you 20 the denominator give you 2 so you end up having 10 how about the other example uh, 6 choose 2 so you have 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial and then 4 factorial so that will give you 6 5 4 3 2 1 and then the denominator will give you 3 2 times 1 and then 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and then you can do some uh, cancellation with these two so that will give you uh, 5 times 6 so that will be 30 and then the uh, denominator will be 2 so you have 15 okay so these are the uh, ways to calculate this n choose k there is a fairly useful formula uh, it's called a Pascal, inequal uh, Pascal identity uh, it says that n choose k plus n choose k minus 1 will equal to n plus 1 choose k. Now this formula will of course look very complicated and I don't require to um, memorize the proof but here is a diagram to illustrate the idea. Uh, so this is this triangle is called the uh, Pascal triangle okay Pascal triangle and in this Pascal triangle you can see there are many many terms and uh, one of the very useful thing about this Pascal triangle is that every row can be calculated from the previous row. Okay, so for example, let's look at this number as 4 and 6 and 10. Now, how can I get to this 10? Well, this 10 can actually calculate it from this, the previous row. You have 4 and 6. You add them up, you will give 10. Now, according to this Pascal identity, uh, what is this 10? Well, uh, this 10 is actually this... Uh, n plus 1 choose k so what is n? well n is 
it, it is this row, okay? So n here is uh, 5, n equals to 4, n equals to 3. So each row represents an n. And each k represents a rich uh, entry in the nth row that you're looking at, okay? So for example, here I am looking at n equals to 5, and then uh, k equals to uh, 3, okay? So uh, n equals to uh, 5 and k equals to uh, 3. And then here, uh, this is uh, n equals to 4. And then uh, this is uh, k equals to, uh, uh, so this is k equals to 2. And then this 6 is n equals to 4, uh, k equals to uh, 3. Okay, so now let's try to map um, back these numbers to this triangle. Now, okay, so before we do that, let's just make sure that all these numbers are correct because n equals to 5, that, that's clear because you are looking at the fifth row. And then k equals to 3 because you're counting the third one, right? 1, 2, and 3. This is k equals to 2 for the 4 because you're counting 1 and 2, okay? And then the 6, of course, is the third entry of the fourth row. Okay, so all these are fine. And then you can map uh, these numbers to this Pascal identity. Uh, and you can see that here you have uh, 5, choose 3, right? So here it would be 5, choose 3. It really equals to uh, 4, choose 3. Okay, so this is uh, 4, choose uh, 3. And then this is uh, uh, 4, choose 2, right? So you can see that the, when, when you add these two numbers up, that would give you this 5, choose 3. So this Pascal triangle is useful because for whatever uh, row you are at, I can just calculate from the previous row. Uh, so the Pascal identity will also help us define what we call the binomial series. In this binomial series, uh, we are interested in looking at this uh, a plus b to the power n thing. And on the right hand side of this theorem, you can see there is a, a finite summation uh, here. And this uh, n choose k really is the, um, is the combination factor that we're looking at. So uh, let's look at one example of how to apply uh, this binomial uh, theorem as well as the Pascal identity. Now, clearly we, we all understand that this 1 plus x uh, to the power 3 is a polynomial. And uh, you can do some calculation and can show that this is uh, uh, 1 plus 3x plus uh, 3x squared plus uh, x cubed. Now, let's try to look at the coefficients. Uh, and this coefficient is, is not magical, okay? It's actually coming from this Pascal identity. If you look at this row, you have this uh, 1, 3, 3, 1, which is the coefficients for n equals to 3. So when you go down to here, you realize that this is exactly 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, so now uh, how do I get this uh, 1 and x? How do I match with this uh, identity here? Well, you can just say that uh, a is 1 and then b is x. And you apply uh, this uh, right-hand side to this expression, you will be able to get this expansion. So that's called the binomial series. When do we need to use the binomial series? We need to use it when we talk about the binomial random variable in chapter three. Uh, so let's work on one example. Uh, and, and let us try to find this uh, summation uh, going from uh, uh, zero to n for the case, and then you have p to the power n minus k and one minus p to the power k and n choose k, and we want to calculate this. So, uh, let me just remind you what is the binomial theorem. The binomial theorem says that a plus b to the power n is this summation of n choose k of a to the power n minus k, b to the power k, k going from 0 uh, to n. Okay, so now we can map uh, what is a. Well, the a here is really this p, and then uh, the b is this uh, 1 minus p. Okay, and therefore this summation is just um, p plus 1 minus p, okay, uh, the entire thing, take to the power n, 
all right because I'm really just matching this P to A and 1 minus P to B okay so this A is this P and then this B is this 1 minus P and so now we can do some sim simplification then you can see that this P and this P will cancel so you end up having 1 okay so magically this uh, finite sum which looks a little bit uh, uh, complicated is actually summing to 1 and this is uh, one of the useful things for binomial random variables where we call this as the probability mass function in chapter 3 which we will discuss and if you sum them up it will give you 1 okay. now bearing in mind that this p has to be between uh, 0 and 1 for otherwise this uh, 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 this entire thing will not uh, give you a probability density function okay all right so uh, that's the end of uh, in this lecture. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free to post it on Piazza or send us an email. Thank you.